be cool. All right. Um, that's very distracting. Um, how many of you guys kind of feel like you hope to be that uh, a, a product or a manager or a technical manager, uh, architect, something like that? You see that in, in your future. Okay, okay. I want to just encourage you to to be proactive. Welcome back. Sorry about that. Um, encourage you to to be proactive. Um, seek jobs where your company does um, encourage your personal growth. You know whether that is investing in you intentionally, um, whether that's sending you to graduate school, um, whether it's having a program to, to develop um, leadership from within the corporation, um, or it's a more like a personal one-on-one -on -one where the someone in, in leadership invests in you and says, here's what I found works for, for me. Here's how I interact. I'd encourage that. If you don't have that, I want to encourage you regardless, start paying attention. If you haven't already, start paying attention. Look at people in your life who are good leaders and start trying to figure out why they're good leaders. Okay, observationally, um, even better, spend time with them and ask them, but pay attention, I know that um, I started doing this when I was working at Argonne, even before I graduated from college. I had this, this one guy who was in charge of the math and computer science division. You gotta use the right terminology. Math and computer science division at, at Argonne. Um, and it's really interesting to, to me, um, and it took me a while to figure out all the dynamics because this is a very academic place where, like, if you if you don't have a PhD, you're kind of like second class citizen. Um, not really, but there there are very clear ceilings. You can't raise above these levels because you don't have the credentials in order to to make it. And somehow he was in charge of this division, and he got his master's degree while he was working at Argonne, which is kind of like the opposite of what you would expect at that kind of a place. And so I was like, well, well how come he's this exception to this rule? And, the, and immediately it was because he's a good leader. And the people realize he was a good leader. They're like, we want you to be in charge of our division. Forget these academic qualifications. They don't matter because we know that you can lead us in a really important way. And he has now moved on from there, I think. He's higher up in the Argonne National Lab uh, administration now, as far as I understand, uh, because he is that kind of a leader. So that when, when I had that realization, that was an accident for me. I wasn't, no one told me to pay attention to my leaders, but it was so in my face that I was like, wait, he's a good leader. I should pay attention to what he does, see why he does the things he does and try to glean some interesting information from him. What works? And, and I'll be honest, some of it worked because of the personality type he was. He, could, he was charismatic, and so he could get people to be excited about things that he was excited about um, and encourage them to do those things that he was excited about and to do those things. And when I tried to apply that to my life, I was like, uh, I'm not the same charismatic personality as he is. That particular trait won't work for me. Okay, so, so you still have to put it through a filter and figure out uh, that. But then there were other characteristics I saw from him where, where he, uh, would, he would do things like, I believe that fundamentally people uh, procrastinate. And so in order to get progress, 
I'm going to put high intense pressure deadlines on people um, because that will encourage them to complete certain milestones at, 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 at these situations. Um, and guess what? People got things done because they, they were in these high pressure situations. It's like, okay, well, that works. I also saw burnout, right? So you, you, you have to be watching with a very open mind about what happens, why people do, how they respond, uh, why they work. For me, um, that is more effective than reading kind of like a, a business, like how to be a good business manager book. Um, not because those business manager books are wrong, but because I'm not living in them. I don't, I don't see all the nuances. I, and I think they're written from kind of a, a, things have already worked and I only noticed the things that worked when I wrote the book. Not a lot of people who write their books remember the things that didn't work and remember what they tried that, that failed. That, that takes a really special gifted writer to, to remember that and be willing to admit that. I would also like you to do this with your pastors. Right? They are pastors, um, they're, they're leaders in your, uh, in your community. They hopefully are leaders for you uh, spiritually. Um, pay attention and ask what, what is working for them? Why, why are people encouraged to, to come to this congregation? Why are people encouraged to grow closer to Christ because of what they do because of what they say, because of how they bring that the congregation along. Um, I think the reason I want to encourage you to do that is because you want to emulate those positive aspects in in your life. Um, I'm anticipating you are not going to stay in the same place for the rest of your life. Maybe some of you are, but as a general rule, you you're going to um, be moving much more than your parents did, certainly much more than your grandparents did. And so you're going to be exposed to a lot of different churches. You're going to be exposed to a lot of different Christian communities. And you want to be able to take the lessons of leadership, not just in the companies that you've worked in, but in the churches that you've interacted with, in the small groups that you participate in, the um, and, and um, become a better um, spiritual leader for your family, uh, for, for your Christian community, who, whomever that may be. Um, maybe even try doing that now. Uh, you know, look at the, the faculty members that you really respect and why, why do you respect them? What do they do? What do they say? How do they interact? Look at, um, you know, I don't know um, how much you interact with the deans in our schools, but you interact uh, with uh, other leadership, uh, people like the residence hall directors, uh, people like uh, <coughs> our, our president or some of the other student development uh, faculty, uh, some of you coaches, right? You have different leaders in your life. Some are effective, some are not as effective, effective. Glean from them what you can, what works, why does it work? If you have a chance, ask. Hey, I noticed you did this. Is that intentional or was it an accident? Um, is this generally applicable that anyone can, can do? and become a, a stronger uh, leader in? Or is it very particular to this person and their situation and their personality? There are both. And you, you kind of have to do that. Is it time dependent? Is it something that worked for them? But by the time you get into a leadership position, it's not going to be as effective because 
the way that people interact is 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 different. Um, the way people expect to communicate with each other is different. So forth. Um, so I'd like to encourage you all to to be more observant in, in those ways. Because regardless if you're going, if you anticipate and moving up management in your company, most of you will be leaders. I think most of you will have families. And so at a minimum, you will be a leader of your children. Not that I'm saying that you should treat your children as employees. But principles of guiding and training uh, still apply. Um, the last thing I'll say, and then I'll, I'll end a little bit early because I'll, I will I will point to you to a video from last year. I said I would do this probably a month ago, and I'm going to do it now because I think it's relevant to what we're talking about. Um, is I want you to, to also think about how your your calling ties in to missions, and that that and I mean specifically Christian mission. Are you going to be intentionally working in a missions organization? Are you going to be intentionally making money um, at a higher Salary than than you could than, than some of the people at our university who have um, less prestigious jobs, right? I just saw an article on CNN on why we don't pay our teachers enough, right? Mm -hmm. They're great people and they do amazing things. And the COVID crisis has highlighted how underpaid they are. I just don't see that changing in the near future, right? So, so our 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 dear friends in the basement of this building, right, are not going to be able to have the same income as most of you are. So are you going to intentionally, what are you going to intentionally do with that in, extra income that, that you have that maybe they don't have? Um, uh, or, or are you going to do something else? Okay, I want you to think about how you're calling plays out in that way. And so what I'm going to do with the, the video that I, oh man, I haven't been putting Jeremiah in here. What, what I'm going to do with, with the video that I, I'll pass around here as soon as I'm done this afternoon is give you the video that um, Dr. Staritz, who last year was a first year professor in the engineering department shared specifically about this topic. If you don't know um, his history, he worked for something like 10 or, or 12 years at Lockheed Martin, um, doing some really cool electrical engineering, uh, embedded engineering kind of robotics stuff, very fascinating stuff. But then he left there to go work in a missions organization in I think, Bangladesh. Um, uh, Eastern Asia. Um, and so he explores these ideas, how he wrestled with them and what the meaningful thing is. Um, and he came back and now he's working at, at, at Taylor um, and, and kind of as a, a different perspective. So I'd like you to hear what he had to say uh, last year along these lines. I think it's really meaningful, impactful, and hopefully uh, you, you can um, take it uh, to, to heart as you ask these types of questions about where God has for you um, in after graduation. All right. So I'll leave early so that gives a reasonable amount of time to, to watch uh, watch that video of his and think in your time. It's, it's on YouTube, so I'll provide you the link for that. All right. Thank you, everyone. Um, Make sure that you have your budget completed before class begins next week. Um, it will greatly um, improve the discussion that takes place next week if you have it. So 
either have it with you printed out on paper, maybe that's too antiquated for all of you, have, it, have your laptop open with the spreadsheet, uh, probably not your phone, that form factor is a little bit too um, compact to, to interact with, but I want you to be bringing to the discussion your budget and, and your um, ideas as we, we talk about that next week, all right? It's, uh, at least for me, hopefully for most of you, it's a, a enlightening and enjoyable experience. I'll see you guys all next week. Sorry, Jeremiah, I didn't see you um, trying to connect.